Let's talk about headhunters. I get the question many times that, that are headhunters even worth it? Do they help me? Because uh, I never get called by them. I, I apply for things, but things go quiet. So that's always the key, key question. Is it worth to use them? Do they work for me or how does it work? It depends. It depends on the level where you are. And it also depends more than anything on the, on the match percentage that you have for the position. As a rule of thumb, I normally use 70%. If, if the position that you applied, which was uh, advertised by headhunters, if you match 70% of the requirements, then you have a chance that they get interested in your profile and potentially give you a ring. Headhunters work in the three levels, basically. There's the executive search level, which is vice president and above, up to board level. Um, these are very tailored shops. The top 10, 15 work globally. They have offices, they have global databases of executives. Um, the volume is less, so they actually, they have the capacity to get to know the candidates. Uh, even personally meeting, having a phone call. Um, when the profiles are of senior capacity, then, uh, then they do uh, keep their relationship very personal. And these are relationships that take, take them through the whole career journey. It's not just one placement, but these, these relationships maintained throughout the professional's uh, career. Then there are mid-management um, headhunters, on a manager level, and here the volume increases tremendously. There's more providers, more candidates. Uh, players are national, regional, um, and the practices are also vary a lot. To get FaceTime, to get call time, informal calls, uh, reduces. Um, main reason is because they need to work through a lot of cases. Uh, commission per case is less. They need to cover more ground to, to make their living. So on this level, expect less replies to your, can we have a call? Um, let's have a chat. Unless there's a personal connection, then it's different. Thirdly, then there's the specialist level where coders, high level coders will be a good example. Um, or oil rig uh, management or very specific niche markets um, where these people work work on, on, on specific markets. If it's tiny niche and the world only has 100 candidates who can do the job, it might get to a personal level um, like in the executive level. Otherwise, it's, it's again a mass market. As headhunters work on matches, they rarely work for well for students who are making career transitions. The reason is the, the basics of the headhunting is that they make money on your profile. They make money when they place you in the company, on your head. They make money on your head and they need to have good matches on their shortlists. They get a big pool of candidates, shortlist, and it's their reputation when they go and present it to the company. So if a profile is a 50 or 40% match, they cannot take that profile forward. And that's also the reason why they wouldn't communicate, communicate with the candidate, because they need to move on and they need to have the match. So they make money with success. Secondly, senior level, allows for, uh, for chats. It's hard to get chats on the, on the middle level uh, for the reasons explained. When you're on their database and there's a, there's a close match, they call you. They know exactly who you are and they call you. They find you on the database and when they call you, there's normally a very close match already. You know that there's something that might be of interest. And you cannot influence them because they run through through the match profiles. If they know you, they they can they can 
they can draw the conclusions. There's no point calling them and saying, uh, just to let you know, I uh, apl applied for this position and I'm really interested and motivated. Doesn't really uh, pay, make a lot of difference uh, with them. Now, what if they call? What should you ask? Or when they call? Key question is to ask if they're working on a mandate or if it's a contingency. The difference is all the top level searches are normally mandates. Mandate is a company giving an exclusive project for a headhunter to search for an executive. Now that gives a lot of data protection and, and professionalism on the process because you know they're only working with, with this company. Contingency, on the other hand, is an open card where pretty much any agency can provide candidates. Many times they provide same candidates and then commission is paid when there's success. Here, you need to ask, be very particular, asking how is my data handled? Who is it going to be given to? When do you ask my permission? And be very detailed on, on the data part. Mandate, you establish the, establish the connection. It's very easy because you'll be working with one person. And ask for the timeline. Ask for the timeline if they know when is the shortlist going in, when do I know, uh, what are the next steps potentially. So those are some basic things on, on headhunters. In a nutshell, they are helpful when you have a matching profile. They become more important when you go up in the senior ranks. Anything beyond vice president and, and beyond will normally be handled, 90% be handled through headhunters, top level headhunters. Keep your data up to date, even if you're perfectly happy and, and like what you're doing, keep your network, keep your data up to date in the headhunter platforms. Best options and opportunities always come when you least expect. <laughs>